Good morning, good morning. Everyone. GM, GM. Happy Monday. Ray, how are you? I'm great. Feeling good. Uh, nice weekend. Uh, lots of news to cover over the weekend, but um, we had a nice win for my, my Dallas Cowboys as well. So I'm feeling pretty, pretty good. Some of our team members may not be feeling as good. Yeah, no, uh, not, not a great weekend for the Bengals or my uh, my Seahawks, but... Got uh my my dogs got a win over the Michigan over Michigan State this weekend, so that was good. Um, it's exciting. Um, but look, we we have a packed show ahead of us. I uh, want to make sure we cover this in in thirty minutes or less, as we we try to do. Um, and I think I think today we'll have a good shot at doing it. Um, but in terms of getting you guys caught up to speed on what it is that we do, this is the WGMI morning show where we bring you everything and anything you need to know about the NFT market in 30 minutes or less. We're going to use some of the WGMI analytics and tools that we have here um, to give you guys a better idea on how some of these events may affect your portfolio and how to stay ahead of it as an NFT collector. As we saw over the weekend, it was not a great weekend to be anything close to or anything exposed to Ethereum, um, as we saw it dip a bit further. So we'll dive into how to stay ahead of that. Um, but if you like what you see, if you like some of the analytics tools that WGMI is providing, comment below um, in on our Twitter or DM us the word news feed for a chance to win a seven day trial to all of our tools. Um, as always, obviously, we'd appreciate it if you retweet um, our tweet, um, get the word out there. And we are also live on on YouTube. Um, if you want to chat with us, maybe add some some thoughts to the conversation. I'm Chile Army, this or Clemente, and uh, we have Ray with me, my co-host. Um, Ray, if if you're ready, I think it's time we dive into the market report. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm good to go. Love to hear what you've surfaced over the last. Uh, 24 hours over the weekend. So we can take a look here and see exactly what's been moving and you know what's uh, what the state of the market is right now. So when pulling this up, um, and by the way, I'm just sourcing this directly from our WGMI newsroom account. We post news from our um, news feed in here and every morning we give you a small market report so you can have that while drinking your cup of coffee. Um, as far as open sea volume, it was just shy of $11 million yesterday on Sunday. Um, Ethereum is hovering right at the 1300s. We finished the weekend off right in the mid 14, 1400s. Um, and then on Sunday, we saw another little plummet. Um, so not great to see, but overall, some volume is still holding up with the top three being Bored Apes, um, Mutants, and Ranga still showing up. It did cool off a little bit. So going into the actual market dashboard, um, as you can see, um, Ranga after hitting a high of, I believe it was 1.85 ETH, um, now has cooled off a little bit into the 1.2s. Um, listings are still going down day in and day out, so that's still encouraging to see. Um, rounding off the top five, we have other side at 1.73 um, and doing 173 ETH in volume, which is kind of cool. Um, we have Clonex just shy of Six ETH, Digidai Gaku, still moving, still doing well. Not a lot of action, though. Um, but when you have a small collection like that, under 2,000, um, it can tend to be swayed pretty easily. Doodles up um, just under 15% um, over the weekend. They started the went into the weekend over at 1.5 ETH, now at 8.8. Um, other things to watch, Moonbirds starting to make a little bit of a comeback and then what i like to do here guys is i like to sort by the seven day listings and see what is going down and i like to pair that with strong volume 
um, and a low floor price, which is what I did with my rare A Pepe's last Friday. Made a call with them at around 0.45, and they made it up to 0.6 over the weekend. Now they're sitting back at 0.5. So if you got in on that, congratulations. And if not, like, which is what I did, <laughs> I just stayed away from it. Um, you gotta have some faith time. in your own calls. No, yeah. <laughs> so that that should tell you what I what I believe in uh, in my my abilities at the moment in this current market. Um, but when going over this, look, you see Gutter Clones making a bit of a a comeback. I know they've they've been hurting a little bit, so it could be good to possibly get back in there. You see fifty sales a day, Ray. This might be something we want to take a look at later on if we have some time. You see the aliens, guys. This is something that uh, we, if we have time later, we're going to talk about because this is a project that I'm watching to get into, especially with the low low royalties. It's nice to see. Um, good to see V friends getting in there. Although that is a bigger collection. Collection Grumples showing up here, um, and then Cool Man's. If <laughs> that's also cool to see. Um, but other than that, as far as the one day movers, um, not a lot to see here, guys. But look. Even though we did see a lot of pain over the last week, right? I don't know about you. I'd love to get your thoughts on here. Um, I didn't. It didn't feel to me like this was one of those max pain events where you compare it to it was what four months ago now when it seemed like everything was crashing. Um, it seemed like it was it was almost over for NFTs, and they did bounce back eventually. But um, even though we see the USD value of a lot of these collections hurting a lot, um, it doesn't necessarily feel like the the ETH value is dropping too much. So what I think would be best, Ray, if you have some thoughts is um, I'll let you kind of take it from here if you can. Um, maybe dive into general practices and what you like to keep in mind during these types of market conditions um, that can then in a few months reap you some of the benefits that, that you may see um, by taking action on these days. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, we've seen ETH slide from, you know, mid 17s hundreds a week ago all the way down to the uh the mid 1300s um as of right now um it definitely would it pays off to be you know a smarter investor who has a plan um I, a lot of people kind of talk about this strategy where you you have your bucket of like for your total nft like uh crypto investments you have a bucket of you know nft investments a bucket of ethereum and a bucket of usdc and you you either look weekly monthly to to rebalance those those buckets into your know, percentages you've kind of defined beforehand. If you're, if you're following that sort of logic and you can be disciplined enough to not just dump everything into NFTs or, or gamble and hold everything in ETH, you can definitely take advantage of some of these swings. You know, right now your ETH basket will probably be worth a little bit lower in terms of US dollars, but if you have those US dollars on the sideline to invest back into some of these dips, you're potentially, you know, going to be able to, to post some gains there. And the same way, go, same goes for NFTs. You know, if NFTs are falling versus ETH or versus USDC, you can, you know, take that USDC, swap directly for NFTs through ETH and, you know, get in at a lower uh, cost basis. So something to take, be aware of. Um, always smart to know your investment goals and have a plan ahead of time. Um, I know one thing we've talked about a bit is talking about some of this uh, like volatility with ETH. Uh, I'm going to steal that from you. Clemente, please do. I'm going to uh, pull up a chart I have to, to kind of talk a bit about, you know, volatility in ETH and, um, you know, the price of ETH and the price of these blue chip NFTs. So I have a chart saved um, looking at kind of uh, doodles and apes since October and kind of plotting it, um, their ETH price against the price of ETH and US dollars. And I know we talk a lot about oh, when, when the market's choppy, these projects, you know, tend to perform worse. But looking back to October, you know, October 1st, we're sitting at, you know, 3,600. We range up into the 4,000s, almost $5,000 for ETH, back down to 2,400. And along that whole period, you see just positive price action in ETH for both of these collections. Really, we could start to see a, a divergence here. It's like around early, uh, early April, I believe, into May, we start seeing um, this kind of ETH hitting a local top. And then slowly hemorrhaging alongside of, you know, the, if you were to plot, you know, your seven day average of these two collections also dropping with it. And I think this is mainly due to, you know, the, the macro situation, you know, these are risk on assets. And, you know, as the macro worsens, these are going to be some of the first asset classes that get dumped, not only by 
individual holders, but some of these large funds that may be trying to cut their exposure a bit and lower their risk. Um, so I'm not sure if, you know, we can continue to say like this narrative of choppy ETH equals NFT is down. It, it's almost, you know, all assets are kind of just chopping down slowly here. Um, just a matter of when we find a local bottom, if there's a point where it's worthwhile jumping in to catch, you know, the next wave. Yeah, it, it's, it's just the thing that I like to run through my head a little bit also just to keep in mind uh, when you look at some of these assets to why they get hurt so much when you look at like specifically NFTs is it's probably as close to as risky as it gets in terms of, of asset classes right now. Um, and it's not like one of those buy the dip situations necessarily when you're like, man, I can buy like Microsoft. You feel like Microsoft is going to be around in 10 years, most likely, right? So you can buy it at these discounted prices and then reap the benefits because you, you can kind of have that conscience of like, hey, they're probably going to be around in 10, 15 years. But when you look at doodles, when you look at um, clones, you look at any of these collections, you, I mean, we all hope that they're going to be around in, in a year, two years, but you never know, right? And as that uncertainty goes up, people are going to put their money where they feel most comfortable um, it's sitting for five, 10 years, especially when we look at some of these most seasoned investors. Um, so it also does help to keep that in mind. Um, so that kind of helps me as well. Yeah, definitely. I know, you know, earlier in the year, late last year, we saw looking at just the volume and, you know, the number of sales, it was concentrated around these blue chip projects. You know, they were just pumping, running every day, trading in and out of these large product projects. And we see a lot more now of, you know, free mints coming up these projects coming out of nowhere, you know, pumping up to two ETH and then dropping back down. And I think a lot of that liquidity is coming out of these blue chips where people are saying, Hey, like, like you said, like, is this a long-term investment? It's now been a year. We haven't right. really seen this massive dividend. We, we have had some airdrops. We have had some, some utility, but what is the plan going forward to value these assets? And it's, it's tough to see that right now as an investor and have that faith. And then all along sitting, watching all these, you know, 10x, 50x on these low pro low mint projects. If you're in a risky asset, why not? You know, roll the dice, try to have as much deal flow information as possible, and get into some of these smaller projects early. So definitely something to look out for, something to watch as we're going on. Um, these you know larger blue chips that we call them are they you know solid investment vehicles going forward? Are they going to recover? Are they going to you know provide dividends, or is it really just you know? Hey, let's let me find what I can make the, the biggest return on now. Right, right. And and another thing to keep in mind is is as like maybe when you look at projects and collections that you want to buy the buy the dip on, or you're trying to figure, hey, what project makes most sense for you to buy back into? I like to think about also like, hey, what are these teams cash in the bank looking like? Like, do they have runway to last them through six months, year, two years, possibly? Right. And when you look at some of these higher well-funded projects like um, Moonbirds and Proof, um, like Yuga, and I also think that like Clone X, when you when you have Nike backing you, the probabilities of you running out of money are, are extremely low. But then when you look at some of these mid to low tier projects that have maybe not really found a secondary source of revenue outside of royalties, it might start spelling some trouble for some of these people. Um, and these collections so it's also something to keep in mind as that those might continue to bleed over time because they don't have the capital to adapt as fast as some of these more well-funded um collections yeah absolutely and it, it kind of goes to show you we're saying like the bullish case to invest in some of these blue chips is hey they're not going to run out of money in two years <laughs> it's we're not talking about <laughs> about like what how we're eventually going to get long rewarded in the long term and i think there yeah. have been a lot of questions about what the long-term investment return is and how that comes to holders exactly. Is it all just, you know, getting speculative assets, additional art, or is there some additional utility that we haven't even seen yet? So it's still very early. And these blue chip projects at the, the forefront, um, I think that they have the resources and the team to innovate. So it's just a matter of which of them do innovate and, you know, how beneficial that is for the holders. Right. Especially as they take on that VC money, it, it does seem to say, hey, does that put holders further down along the list of prioritize people that can benefit from the success of a team collection project? Um, look, Ray, we honestly, I feel like I can talk about this with you for, for hours, but we only have 30 minutes. 
And from what you were telling me, we do have a packed news segment. Um, so why don't we maybe move forward from here and you walk us through what went on in the NFT world in terms of news using the WGMI news feed. If you, again, guys, if you like what you see, um, don't forget if you retweet or DM us um, the word news feed, you can win a um, seven day trial to use all of our tools. Um, enough of me talking, Ray, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a jam-packed news day, all the news updates over the weekend coming in from our contributors, our, our curators and analysts. Uh, definitely a, a lot to cover here and a lot of interesting uh, takeaways and things to watch for for the upcoming week. Um, looking at Cool Cats, uh, we had an update from Red Sox guy, our curator. We had quite a movement in floor price um, after, like over the uh, since Friday, actually. I think we had a, our market talk space in the afternoon on Friday. And the volume was just picking up on Cool Cats um, early, early morning, mid afternoon Eastern time. And at that point, you know, um, RSG Red Sox guy, our curator is like, I, I don't know, like there's there has to be some other news. It doesn't it's not just related to cool pets or sorry, cool comics, which are, are coming this week. It, it's just not big enough of an announcement. But um, he notes here that there's an unexpected town hall coming this Wednesday. And the rumors are that there's going to be a CEO announcement. So maybe some insider information there trading into the volume or, or you know, just the knowledge of this uh, town hall coming forward, um, kind of leading to some of that price action. So something to watch out for Wednesday's uh, town hall meeting. Could see a pump out of it. Um, could see a dump. You know, we've seen a lot of different uh, reactions of the market to these, you know, bigger announcements by the, the projects. But something to keep your eye on there. We also provide some information on the cool comics they're minting on the 21st, revealing on the 28th. Moving on to Azuki, uh, we saw some price action here as well um, over the last week. Uh, some Azuki beans price action. We saw a big run on Babu. Uh, there's a number of different events and um, information, both from last week and information that's coming this week that has affected this price movement. Um, last week, there was a video released of Babu um, falling out of the space station uh, moving that story, you know, incrementally ahead. What's next for Bobu, I think, is a big question for many Azuki um, holders. Also, we saw um, a video on beans showing two beans merge into one um, with an explosion. Uh, a lot of rumors here talking to ONG, our Azuki curator. Um, maybe this involves a, a potential uh, burn mechanic where you can burn two beans and get a new NFT or maybe some adjustment to your Azuki profile picture. Something to watch out for there on the bean side. And for Azuki, uh, we're circling September 23rd. That's this Friday. On the uh, Azuki World uh, Alley graphic, we see a calendar in the background. There's two dates circled. The first one is September 23rd. So as this date approaches, we're looking for updates in the Azuki World to see exactly what um, they are going to be releasing. You can look at price movement, you know, over the last few weeks, we have seen an increase, uh, again, you know, right around uh, the 16th. So Friday, uh, had a big jump here, you know, 8 ETH on Thursday, we were around 7.63. We've jumped all the way up, uh, 9.95 and we're at 9.989 right now. So closing in on that 10 ETH mark for Azuki with news to come. So it'll be interesting to, to follow that news on Friday and any more information we receive in the meantime. Moving on to Artifact, we've seen uh, a little bit of movement on the monolith side, a little bit of movement on the pod side. Um, the Clonex have continued their trend downwards. They're right under six now after receiving all that Artifact merch forging uh, gear. Uh, there is some news coming up that's expected for the pods and for monolith. We're expecting the monolith two quest uh, to be announced at some point. It's going to be uh, shortly after forging ends. So uh, forging is now over. So we're expecting that to be the next news item coming from Artifact. Uh, the quest window is going to be smaller. So seven to 10 days. If you look back and remember the Monolith 1 quest, I believe that lasted over a month. Um, I'll need to look more into more details, but this will be a shorter window. And I believe they're talking about um, it, it being Nike involved. It, 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 Nike is branded on there. So it'll be interesting to see what exactly is going to come out of these Monolith 2 boxes. Um, looking at them since the beginning of September, we've seen, you know, started at 1.4 ETH. Beginning of September, we hit a high around uh, 2.25. We're sitting right around right around 2 now on this model. So if you jumped in a few weeks back, knowing this news, you would have been in a good position right now. But I think we may have reached kind of local top unless there's some crazy kind of announcement. Um, but something to keep an eye on for sure with, with the monoliths. 
Um, and then after the monolith, so looking at that monolith price action, you know, that started beginning of September. Um, forging had all the attention, you know, the monoliths were good by then. So now I think monoliths have a lot of attention and maybe we start looking to the next event, which is this uh, loot pod and space pod burning event. So we can look at um, loot pod prices, space pod prices, um, take a look and see where exactly um, we've been here. You know, we're looking at about 0.5 on these pods. There hasn't been a ton of price action um, on them yet. Could be a potential good entry into these as um, there, that will be kind of the next news on the horizon for Artifact. Um, we talked to JKB, our curator for Artifact, and he said, yeah, they've talked about it. It's going to be burning pods, probably multiple pods for upgraded, um, some sort of upgraded asset, whether it's a, a different customized pod, a bigger pod, some sort of new pod altogether. But that's on the horizon and something to be watching out for if you're looking to get into the Artifact ecosystem. Moving on, it's uh, raffle season here. We have a few different raffles. Um, you know, our news feed provides you the updates as well as your actionable actions that you need to be taking. Uh, we have uh, three raffles here, one for Zen Academy, uh, mint list opportunities for the Metabrew Society. If you have one of those Zen Academy passes, you can enter in the pre-mint there. Uh, we also have our own uh, raffle here, a little, little meta inception, WGMI on the WGMI news feed. Uh, some spots available for the Littles project coming up, uh, free mint. Uh, we have spots available to our premium NFT and also our all access beta NFT holders here. And we have some new collab council picks from uh, Premint. Premint has um, a few more here. It looks like Overborn and Hinosis Tigers. I've been seeing the name Hinosis Tigers around. I'm not sure um, what exactly it is, but I have seen it in a few places now. And these um, these giveaways are, are low barrier to entry on Premint for Collab Council. Basically, you just need to click and register. So one click here, get in, have a chance to win yourself, and allow a list for an opportunity at potential gain. Um, like I said, we keep you up to date on all of the actions you need to take for your holdings. Um, we're you know, scouring projects, looking at all of our deeply curated ecosystems, as well as other ecosystems out there with our analysts to make sure that you're not missing raffles, claims, airdrops. And um, if, you, if you want access to this tool, as well as our portfolio tool, head over to WGMI.io. We're minting our all access pass right now. It provides access to everything we have at WGMI.io, our portfolio, our charts, our project explorer page, our news feed, everything to keep you up to date with your holdings, both in terms of data and news. Um, I'll maybe take a, a break here for a second, Clemente. I don't know if you have any questions on the news so, so far, anything you want to expand a bit upon. If not, I can keep running through. I just wanted to, you know, maybe give our, our audience's ears a break from, from my voice for a minute. <laughs> no, this, is, this is great. Um, it, it's cool hearing. I mean, it, it it's nice having, um, I know this week with these types of uh, potential catalyst, big events, um, whether it's Azuki, Cool Cats, or Artifact, just I, I have a little bit of peace of mind knowing that no matter what happens, I'm going to be kept in the loop when later that afternoon or right after the event happens, I can just be caught up by our curators and ask them some questions. Other thing I'll say is it's so cool to me that with in Web3 and, and, and NFT specifically, you have this type of flexibility when you introduce the um, this burning mechanism, right? When you bring in the, the Bobu tokens um, or these space pods and, and what it can allow you to do when you play around with it. Um, that, that gets me super excited. I know... Um, <clears throat> the gutter ecosystem has been playing with it a little bit so you don't mess up and it's, i think it might be the most effective way to expand or add a new collection um without massively um creating a, and expanding the supply um so anyways i just thought it was cool uh, but you, you can go ahead and keep going right yeah absolutely and we, we'll talk a bit more about the uh the gutter ecosystem and gutter con coming up shortly as well and that's on our list to do uh, so, all right, we'll move forward then. So the Huxley, uh, Huxley robots, if you hold a Huxley robot, you need to claim your human before noon today. So about an hour and a half left in this claim window. Um, you can claim at uh, HuxleySaga.com. Be sure to do this. The humans are, I believe, at a at least a 0.3 floor right now. So if you hold a robot for whatever reason you haven't claimed already, make sure you get that claim in before the deadline today. Um, onto the generative art side, uh, QQL and Tyler Hobbs. Um, 
or QQL by Tyler Hobbs and Dandelion West. So this is a project of 999 pieces. Tyler Hobbs, the uh, creator of Fidenza's, um, an experiment kind of uh, with user created uh, code generated of art, they're calling it. So they'll have users, they'll, they'll mint this mint pass, and then they basically get involved with the output in some in some way. I don't know the exact details. We have some sample outputs here, but I know that you know they're going to be able to auction or to be able to buy these mint passes sometime in September and then mint at your leisure. Um, I believe there's no expiration on when you can mint, so it'll be interesting game mechanics here on the artwork. And they're opening up uh, the user generation today, so anybody can can jump in today um, when they open this up and start generating these outputs. Only people with mint passes though can mint. So you can jump in, you can try, uh, go through their, um, their system of kind of generating these using your own input, um, co-creating these as you will, and some example outputs ahead of the mint. Something interesting, something to, to keep an eye on. I'm sure it'll be uh, seeing some of these pop up um, over social media, some of the outputs. Um, I, I think they're pretty aesthetically pleasing myself. There's some interesting um, things going on here. But uh, definitely something to watch, definitely something to keep an eye on, especially if you're a big Art Blocks and Tyler Hobbs uh, collector. Uh, going into 10KTF a bit, we've had a, a few news updates here. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, jump into just 10KTF. We can filter and sort by individual projects as well. So looking at 10KTF, um, over the weekend, uh, we had the mech destruction. Um, everyone was expecting us to be killing the kaiju with this giant mech. But uh, in the end, um, this PFP mech generated uh, or PFP generated uh, mech robot does, in fact, you know, fall to the kaiju and and perishes, which is it's kind of funny and ironic because a bunch of people submitted their PFPs to be on that uh, robot. Mine was actually featured on there as well as I submitted it um, for the video. I think we posted that as well on WGMI newsfeed. Um, but. Interesting to see this, not what was expected. Some people were upset. They thought they were finally going to be, you know, getting rid of this kaiju and getting on to the next level of the story. Wasn't the case. Uh, we saw a bit of a run on Genesis 10KTF items here. Um, and Matoshi reiterated, you know, the, the mantra for 10KTF, Genesis is king. And we've seen that price kind of move. So this was uh, submitted on Saturday. Uh, she talked a bit about it um, on Friday as well. And now seeing that um, that the Genesis is king, we have seen movement on that price action. Uh, there was another tweet that was found that was kind of indicating that there would be potentially a burn, some sort of Genesis burn. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been some price action and speculation regarding that as well. Um, so that kind of covers 10 KTF. Keep an eye there. Keep an eye on whatever quest is coming this week after you know the robot kind of died and see what's going on exactly with the Genesis items. Keep an eye on that price action for sure. Uh, moving out of 10 KTF and into a little bit of Kuma Leon. So this project is um, by artist Okaz and um, it's a free mint. Uh, there are some allow list opportunities. I believe it's 100% allow list. It's slowly minting. I don't believe it's minted out yet. We've seen the floor run all the way up to, to 0.5 at this point. 2.7k items right now. I think it's a 3k total collection. We'll keep you updated on the public mint on the newsfeed as well if it's going to get to public. Um, one interesting play here that you know jumped out at me because I'm into the Tezos ecosystem is that the same artist currently has an active project minting on Tezos. So um, I've been minting some of these and maybe I'll, I'll live mint another one here. A fairly cheap Tezos mint, five Tezos. Um, to mint one of these um, enclosures. So it's kind of a speculative play here, live minting on air uh, on the Kumaleon artist as this project continues to run and continues to get attention. I think we'll see this mint out. Um, I've you know, pre-listed a few as well to, to, to capture in on any potential secondary value. But if you're in the Tezos ecosystem, we're also updating you there. We had some Zancan mints over the weekend. We uh, alerted you to, there's a, a raffle that you could get a good deal on a Zancan piece. Um, we, posted that information over the weekend. So we have stuff not only for ETH, but also for Tezos, Solana, and we're expanding to other ecosystems as well to keep you up to date on the information you need to know as an NFT investor. So moving out of that, we have some more, more art. We have a, an Us Factory drop today by Art Plus Brad. Uh, we have links to a few of the uh, different pages here. We can see 
the main page here. This is minting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's a, uh, a, a solid price of 0.12. It's not a Dutch auction. Straight price 0.12 ETH there. Uh, here's one of the sample outputs. I wasn't able to find any other artwork by this artist um, of note. Um, I linked out to a uh, description page as well that you can get a little more information on the actual project, how it's um, generated, the logic behind it, and what makes it as interesting as it is. So something to keep out, keep an eye out for. I'll be watching this as I watch all our blocks projects um, at a 0.12 ETH uh, price and a supply of 240. I mean, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I'm thinking there's going to be, you know, some solid value to get in and then flip on secondary. Um, but as always, do your own research, you know, watch the volume, make sure that the volume is there before aping in. On to some V Friends news here. We have a gift goat claim deadline, uh, September 21st, which is this Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time is the deadline to claim gift number eight for your gift goats. Um, there's a link to click to claim directly from our newsfeed. Also a video walkthrough of the claiming process. So make sure you're on top of that. If you are a gift goat holder in the V friends ecosystem and moving on to other deed, we have a chief gaming officer was recruited to oversee the other side project. Uh, his name is Spencer Tucker. He was currently at uh, president of games at Scopely. I believe that's a mobile game company. Um, he was also senior vice president of product at Gree international. Um, Interesting to see this hire. I'm kind of curious why they didn't have a, a chief gaming officer before, you know, earlier yeah. in this, this other deed process. But um, it, it's an, an announcement, nonetheless, in an ecosystem where there haven't hasn't been much news. So, you know, any announcement there uh, should be kind of looked at, scrutinized, especially with the um, you know the market cap of a project like other deeds. You know, 200k of those eventually, and and the price that they're at. Um, Definitely uh, something to look out for, take a look at, see if you can get any kind of edge there. So that takes us down to gutter cats now. So if you're at GutterCon, you're waking up, you're probably feeling a little hungover today. Just make sure that you can claim your, uh, your gutter cat merch bundle. Um, I believe it has a mint price, 0.07, four days left there. Uh, includes, uh, I think, a hat, a shirt, a wallet, clip, and some cards. Um, Interesting um, little claim here. If you were at GutterCon, I believe it's tied to your token proof or your holding to make sure that you actually went. So that's minting now. If you're part of the GutterCat gang, um, definitely take a look at that. That's something you're interested in. And I think that right there wraps it up for me in terms of catching you up on the news from the weekend. Um, again, you know, big thanks to our contributors, our analysts, our curators, um, all getting this news together, putting it in one place. Not sure if you have anything else to add on the news or if you want to jump, you know, into uh, I know you're you're teasing a bit about your your pick of the day today. Yeah, I mean, this was this was great. Now, obviously, thanks to our, our contributors. All, it, it's just great work that they're doing um, makes makes what we do a lot easier when, when we know that they're doing what they need to be doing and, and providing people with the updates that they need. I mean, when I when I can wake up in the mornings and just scroll through knowing I have about eight news pieces to go through versus having to go on on Discord, Twitter for an hour out of my day. I can knock everything out in, in five to 10 minutes. It is extremely useful. I mean, it allows me to have more time to do some of the things that I uh, I like and enjoy, which is speculating a little bit and, and having some fun with the, uh, the Aetlian's um, floor price, which is what my pick of the day today is. So, you you heard it here first, folks. Um, here's what I have for you. So what again? I'll I'll uh, just to get people caught up to speed a little bit. And I'll go through this as fast as I can. Is what I like to watch for right now. And my motto um, as I've been going through these and, and trying to find projects to potentially speculate a little bit on, um, just have some fun. Is I like to see a decline or a steady floor price and a decrease in listings, and then pair that with steady volume. So you look to see north of 30 to 40 sales, obviously, depending on the collection. Um, but the last one to fit my uh, my filter for that was um, a Pepe Yacht Club, which ran from 0.45 to 0.6. So you basically are getting a guaranteed pump. Um, <laughs> double your investment, 
Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I will be watching for this, and the zero percent royalties definitely make it more intriguing. Um, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna look to make a me a weath offer, maybe buy a couple, um, and then I'll update you guys on it as we uh, we move on over the week. But that's my pick of the day. Eight liens. Um, you see that this decrease in listings. The floor price is staying the same at about 0.08. It's been moving at this price for a while. Um, so I'm looking to get in. I, I'm loving this. I think uh, just under 6% listed is uh, beautiful. Um, so I'm liking it. That's my pick of the day. Eight liens. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> awesome. You heard it here first. Eight liens. Next one the, Next one for a 50% gain coming coming right from Clemente. <laughs> right. Are you gonna get? Are you gonna buy into this one? Yeah, I'm gonna buy into. It. Look, I, I need to have uh, I need to have spice spice things up a little bit. I feel like I've been I've been out of it a little bit, and and um, yeah, I mean, it, when when it's cheap like that, um, maybe you scoop a few, see how it runs, um, and then go from there. But look, I mean, if I can sell these at 0.13, 0.14, get a little, uh, little co- free coffee for tomorrow, I'm not I'm not complaining. <laughs> love it love it get gotta get gotta get that free coffee i think we did a great job today we're, we're only five minutes over we had a jam-packed day we got through all the news we got through each price we got through the pick of the day um anything left for you or are we ready to wrap it up here i'm good i'm good i'm ready to wrap it up like i said guys um like always if you like what you saw don't please we'd love any feedback that you have in our discord dm us on twitter tweet at us um you can even say you hate it as long as it's feedback and as long as um you know, they say um, any press is good press. So even if you you don't like it, just let us know. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, guys, if, if you do like what you see, um, let us know. DM us. And if you want to try out the tool, choose the DM. And um, I'll see if hopefully if I don't, if I don't get fired by then, I can, uh, I'll, I'll try to get you guys a, a free trial. But uh, that, that's all I have. <laughs> um, and um, Ray, I think we're good to wrap it up. Um, Let's get after it. Hope you have. Hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at the same time, seven fifteen a.m. Pacific, seven fifteen a.m. Eastern. Ray, thank you so much for the news. Thank you so much for for the tips. Um, greatly appreciated. Um, I'll let you uh, let you um, end the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for listening. If you're listening live, you're listening. Uh, afterwards, um, appreciate you. Hopefully you found what you heard valuable here. Check us out, WGMI.io. That being said, later.